Welcome to Upsides, it's week 10 in the NFL. I'm Matt Ufford here to take you through some of the best games on this week's schedule of NFL games. Joined as always by joke ruiner Alex and Will the Sound Guy. Hey guys, how's it going? Not the most inspiring slate of games, so let's start things off with the Lions at Packers. Not really a game I expect to be super close. Really, we're just talking about this one because the Lions are really Detroiting this one up. Uh, one and seven this season. Jim Caldwell has called going into the media room the Dungeon of Doom. Did he really? Yeah, he called the media room the Dungeon <laughs> of Doom. Four teams have scored 30 plus points on them. Uh, they just fired the team president and GM. A couple weeks ago, they fired uh, the team's offensive coordinator. Jim Caldwell, you, you can't. When things are going wrong, you, you need that important buoy for the organization to keep things afloat that is Jim Caldwell. Hey, uh, the Lions have lost 24 consecutive games at Lambeau Field. They play there every year, right? Yeah. That's a long streak. They have nine players that were born after the last time they won there. <laughs> Ouch. Whoa. The Packers, uh, a very unusual two-game losing streak for them. Of course, that'll happen when you go on the road and play two consecutive undefeated teams. So I don't think there's anything too amiss with the Packers. However, their defense has not been quite the same. Pass rush has kind of tailed off. They were strong to start the year, but didn't get to Cam or Peyton really much at all. And, and so, well, how uh, can you get to those good runners? <laughs> Especially Peyton. Yeah. Well, stone, light on his feet. Yeah. Stone <laughs> Manning. I think that's his nickname. I thought it was Stone but no, if it's if, if it's you stone the e, it's stony. Stony. It's like a Papa John's breadstick that was left out. It'll be a while before I eat free breadsticks again. Okay, so the line on this game is Packers by 13 at home. Aaron Rodgers, Packers angry, lost two in a row, going up against a terrible Lions team. I'll take that. I'll take Packers. What about you? With Sam Shields hurt. I think I think Megatron has a big day. I think Lions cover. The game that I think is going to be most fun this week, uh, and I would have not predicted this in week one. Vikings at the Raiders. The 6-2 and two Vikings are tied for the NFC North lead. When was the last time the Vikings were tied for the NFC North lead this late in the season? 09. 62. At least. That's got to be such an exciting time for Vikings fans, knowing that your team is tied for the NFC North lead and also knowing that the Packers are going to win the division anyway. But hey, you're in great position for a wild card game that you'll probably end up losing. No, it's an exciting young team uh, that'll be without Teddy Bridgewater. He's got a good shot at playing. He's got a, he's got a good shot at sleeping on the yeah. field. My God, did you see that hit? Well, dude, I mean, his arm didn't get concussed. Zimmer said he was about to fight Jeff Fisher. Ugh. Mike Zimmer would kick the sh out of Jeff Fisher. I think who would win in a coach's Royal Rumble? It would have been I Jim think, Harbaugh, but, but he didn't have what it takes to make it in the NFL. God, that felt good to say. That was fun. Whoa, what are we saying? Dan Campbell. Dan, uh, Campbell, Dan Campbell off the top rope. Dan Campbell. Oh, uh, the, the soup guy? Yeah. <laughs> he has he has Stone Cold's entrance, but they throw him two things, a chunky noodle. <laughs> He's got beef soup all over his face. <laughs> Adrian Peterson leading the league in rushing. Amari Cooper, a great rookie wide receiver. Stephon Diggs, hopefully Teddy Bridgewater, Derek Carr, just two fun young teams. Anyway, what's the line on this game, Alex? Uh, no line, because no, uncertainty Four, with Bridgewater. Oh. 4.05. Uh, hey, you know what, just take the Raiders. <laughs> Why not? Book it, stamp lock of the week. Oh boy, hey, a team that we're just, nobody's talking about the Patriots. Playing at the Giants. I, I don't think these these teams, have they ever faced each other else? Never. Deion Lewis done for the season. He's got a torn ACL. Uh, see, that's how you say it. Instead of instead of saying he has an ACL. ACL. Yes. Yeah, everybody has ACLs, Alex, except for uh, most running backs after the Although, retire. now it's proper to say he has an ACL, because now he really only has I, one. Yeah. So. Patriots are favored here by eight points, even though they're on the road. Uh, what are the keys to the Giants actually winning this game? JPP versus Cameron Fleming or whoever the hell the Pats start at left tackle. So the Pats Good. have trouble with their offensive line. Yeah. They got JPP's uh, oven mitt, man. Yeah. He's got the he's got the mangled half hand. No Jonathan Hankins, so I feel like the Patriots could just run all over him with Blunt and Who's powers. Jonathan Hankins? Oh, he's awesome. Great D tackle tore his pack. Everybody's tearing their pack. Yeah. Let me say, as someone who once tore his pectoral muscle, A hurts a lot. Uh, B, sounds like wet leather ripping. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Torn pecs, they run in my family, so I actually had both mine removed. Pectoral muscle, unless you are a professional football player, completely useless to human beings. Oh, yeah. If we walk upright, we don't need pectoral muscles anymore. They're probably a pretty important muscle, right? Like underrated muscle? 
Patriots are favored in this game by eight. Maybe mm. Eli Manning throws a lot of touchdown passes. No, Patriots are going to cover. Sunday night football, a game that I'll be having a heart attack about. The 6-2 and two Cardinals travel to face the 500 Seahawks. This game is for more, most of the marbles in the NFC West. Cardinals will be in the driver's seat and almost completely unlikely to lose the division if they win this game. Whereas the Seahawks uh, will get back into the hunt for the NFC West crown. Both teams coming off a of bye, which is totally unfair. The whole point of having a bye is so you got a leg up in your game. Like, come on, man. I'm I just, to... Shouldn't it just be the whole NFL has a bye in week nine? You play eight games, everyone's off for a week. And that, yeah. that would be... Yeah, oh, I'm sure the NFL would be like, uh, hey, you know what? Millions of dollars? Sure, we don't want course. millions of dollars. From a football standpoint, the uh, Seahawks uh, as excellent as they've ever been defensively. However, not forcing a lot of turnovers. The Cardinals on offense have been powered by miraculous old people. Carson Palmer, old, really good. Chris Johnson, old, washed up, now good again. Larry Fitzgerald, old, still really amazing. Also probably like most overrated bird in nature. Cardinals don't do shit. It's like- it, Dude, why do you like Cardinals? <laughs> They're red. Some some dude painted a few pigeons red a long time ago and they made it and, yeah. then, and then you got Cardinals. Let's get something with talons or something. Right, give me some fucking talons on sharp beaks. Ah! Seahawks, of course, uh, that offensive line is hot garbage. Week eight game against the Cowboys. Seahawks managed to not allow Russell Wilson to get sacked for an entire game. Seahawks are favored by three in this game and God knows why because They've done nothing but disappoint against the spread. I think the Seahawks are like two and six against the spread. Don't look it up, I'm you're just gonna, gonna waste I'm all of our gonna. time. <laughs> Even though I have no good reason to assume that the Seahawks will do anything but disappoint me, I'm gonna take them anyway. Cardinals. Yeah, you f***ing ass. Oh, Monday Night Football, surprise, it's another sh game. Uh, Texans at Bengals. Uh, Bengals are eight and oh, and gonna cruise to nine and oh, thanks to playing the Texans. Hold that thought. Uh, yeah, sorry, that had to come out. I was just looking at the Texans roster and I uh, felt uh, stomach discomfort. Brian Hoyer has been a new Brian Hoyer. He just had to be benched before he could become good Brian Hoyer. I love the, the timeline. Thanks to Hard Knocks, it was televised. Like, Bill O'Brien is like, all right, Br Brian Hoyer, you got the job. And like, hey, if things are a little bit shaky, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have a quick hook or anything like that. Brian Hoyer had three shaky quarters before Ryan Mallett was immediately inserted. I still buddy. think I still think Bill O'Brien just like f***ed up on the sideline and accidentally sit Ryan instead of Brian going into the fourth quarter. Safe bet, dude. It's a good theory, Will. Oh uh, no, I stopped recording. Your show's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's say some good things about the Bengals because they don't get enough attention on this show. Uh, Andy Dalton, that ass said that he's an MVP candidate. No one is going to take a red-headed man seriously as an MVP <laughs> candidate, okay? Let's just go ahead and get out there. There is a clear ginger bias. Andy Dalton has too many years of being Andy Dalton for him to get MVP consideration. But he's having a fantastic year. Tyler Eifert, terrific. Uh, AJ Green, as good as ever. Gio Bernard, ha having one of the best seasons for running back in the NFL right now. Yards per carry amongst players with at least 70 carries. Just a smidge behind Todd Gurley. And the Texans, let's say some nice things about that. JJ Watt actually having an, an okay season. He actually has like more sacks than he's played games, I think. It's still disappointing. He's, yeah, and he's probably yeah. not gonna win Defensive Player of the Year. Oh man, JJ Watt isn't gonna get to 20 sacks this year. What a disappointment. On the other side of the field, DeAndre Hopkins is basically the JJ Watt of wide receivers, doing everything for that offense. They can't decide between Brian Hoyer and Ryan Mallett. How and could you? DeAndre Hopkins is out there getting 12 catches and 130 yards a game. Gonna it, set a record for most times targeted in the season. I mean, who else are they gonna throw it to? Nate Washington? The Bengals are favored by 12 here at home. I'll take the Texans to cover. Yeah, uh, I'm going Bengals. It's just so nice though when like this far in advance you're like, oh, I'm gonna get to sleep early on Monday. Yeah, it's gonna be great. There's gonna be no reason to watch this. There you go, folks. Another fun-ish week in the NFL coming up week 10. Enjoy the games. Thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, and thank you for subscribing to SB Nation on YouTube. You should do that if you haven't already. That is the hint that I am laying down. See you next week.